I'm Judy Phelps, and we welcome you to On Guard Defense Training Center and Shooting Range, Ohio's premier shooting experience. We are just a stone's throw from y'all in neighboring Benton County. Here at On Guard Defense, we specialize in unarmed and armed defense solutions for the whole family, whether it's concealed carry, drawing from the holster, unarmed self-defense with Krav Maga, or trying your hand at archery. We've got that and more. So let's go inside the training center and get started. Hi folks, let's talk about the universal gun safety rules because the number one thing to be concerned about when dealing with a tool that could be used as a deadly weapon is safety. Rule number one, always treat guns as though they're loaded until you've made the proper clearance check. And we'll go into that a little bit later. But even after they're clear, always treat those guns with the respect they deserve. Rule number two, never point your firearm at anything you're not willing to destroy. That includes your own body, anyone else, or anything at all that your intention is not to destroy and obliterate. Rule number three, and this is the one that catches most folks off guard. We need to have good trigger finger management. We need to make sure that our trigger finger stays off of the trigger and outside and away from this trigger guard until we're on target and ready to shoot. Notice my trigger finger is indexed high along the slide, the frame of the gun. And so once I am on target, that is when I can begin that trigger press until it goes boom. Once the, the firearm goes off, we want to bring that trigger finger back and index it along the frame of the gun. Rule number four, always know your target. What's around it, beyond it. Reason being is, is if we miss our target or over penetrate our target, then we need to be cognizant of what's around that target. And most importantly, we always need to positively identify our target before we press that trigger. So those are the four universal safety rules. Certainly there are more safety rules and they are range specific rules. So whether you visit an indoor or an outdoor range, be sure that you understand the rules in play at that range. All right, let's talk about clearing a semi-automatic firearm. If I walk into a room and there's a gun on the table, I need to make sure that I safely clear that firearm so that it stays out of the hands of unauthorized people. So I will pick up the firearm and I will point it away from me in a safe direction. I am utilizing my good trigger finger management discipline by keeping it away from the trigger and outside of that trigger guard. The first thing I want to do is locate the magazine release button so that I can remove that magazine because the magazine, think of it as food for the gun. The magazine holds the ammunition or the cartridges. So I'm going to press that magazine release and out comes that magazine. There's no rounds in this, but that doesn't mean there's not a round in the chamber. In order to confirm that, we need to rack that slide a few times while we're rolling the firearm over here on its side because as I rack that slide, this ejection port will be exposed and if there is a round in the chamber, the extractor in, inside of the gun is going to pull that cartridge and throw it out. By tilting the firearm to the side, gravity aids in throwing it away from us versus if we have it held upright, it could very well go up and come back down into that chamber. So we're going to grasp the rear of the slide and I'm going to push forward with my shooting hand and pull backward on the slide with my non-shooting hand while tilting that firearm to let gravity help us out. Now that I'm satisfied that there are no rounds in the chamber, I want to lock this slide to the rear position. Again, I'm going to locate the button and it happens to be on this other side. 
I'm going to grasp that slide, pull it back, and with my thumb, push up that slide lock. That causes for the slide to be locked to the rear position. Finally, I'm going to perform a visual and physical check of the chamber and of the magazine well. I do that by looking down the chamber, seeing there's no obstruction, and I can use my pinky finger as well to poke around in there, making sure it's clear. I can look down inside of that ejection port and my magazine is out so I can see my hand below or the light. I'm satisfied that this firearm is clear of any ammunition and therefore is safe. I'm going to take it and put it in a place that it is safely stored and away from children or other, again, unauthorized people. Let's talk about gun handling fundamentals because it's really important to achieve proper grip, proper stance, proper sight alignment, sight picture, and that trigger press. So to get started, let's take a look at our grip. We can take our shooting hand and position it in an L shape. When we place it on our firearm, we want to do so as high on the back strap as possible. Remember, we talked about that tang. That tang is there to help us separate, keeping our uh, shooting hand as high on that back strap without going over that tang because we don't want a slide bite. We don't want any obst anything obstructing that slide mechanism from moving backward and forward. Notice where my trigger finger is. It's resting alongside of the frame of the gun. This is a proper one-handed grip. We could certainly shoot with one hand if we needed to or wanted to. But why when we have our second hand? So, now that we've got our master grip, let's go ahead and throw that thumb out of the way to make room for our support hand. If I fully extend my support hand, I want to turn my thumb and point it towards my target, simply the same direction as the barrel of my firearm. Then I'm going to bring that together onto the grip, rest that thumb down over top of the other thumb, and then wrap my support fingers over top of my shooting fingers. The top view, as you'll note, my trigger finger and my support thumb are nearly in alignment on both sides of that barrel. That is achieving a proper grip. I can bring my firearm up to my chest, relax, and get ready to shoot. This is known as high compressed ready. That way, when I'm ready, I can punch out and round those shoulders and begin aligning my sights to the target. Let's talk about our sights, sight alignment and sight picture. Our rear sights and our front sight. We want to align them appropriately in our line of sight and then along to the target. This depicts our rear sights. This depicts our front sight or front post. When we're shutting down one eye and looking through the rear sights to the front sight, we want to align it so that all of the posts are at the same height, as if you could lay a level on top and it would be perfectly level. Notice on these sights that they have white dots. Not all sites will have white dots, colored dots, or any dots. They could just be black. So just make sure you're lining up the tops of the posts. Now, the bullet is going to hit the target wherever your front post is aligned. If you'll notice, that front post here is aligned equally from each side. We call that equal height, equal light. If our front post we're higher than our rear posts, then we can make certain that our bullet will land high of our intended target. Likewise, it will land low, right, or left of our intended target. So we want to achieve the appropriate sight alignment just like this.
Now we want to overlay our site alignment onto our target. That's called site picture. When we're looking through our sites and we've got them lined up, we can either make that, position that front post to cut our bullseye, in this example, in half. Or you might be familiar with what's known as a six o'clock hold. When we're looking at an analog clock, up top is 12, bottom is six, right is three, and left is nine. So we're positioning our front post on our bullseye at the six o'clock hold. Either of those positions will work for you. Now that we've achieved our appropriate site alignment, our site picture, we can screw it all up by way of jerking our trigger through that trigger press. Notice I say trigger press, not pulling the trigger. When we think of pulling the trigger, we are making something happen, all right? And of course, we're always in control of our firearm, but we don't want to jerk that trigger and thereby move our sight alignment sight picture and then we're not going to hit our intended target. So think of it, the difference in a spray bottle. If I'm going to do my windows, I'm going to pull that trigger and make that bottle spray. But when I'm handling my firearm, I want to take care and have a nice, smooth, consistent trigger press to the point where when the gun reaches its breaking point and goes boom, it should surprise me. If it doesn't surprise me and I'm anticipating by pulling and making it happen, I'm going to have the propensity to jerk. So I'm going to just go straight, flat, back. You see it dribbling, not spraying. Boom! And then my finger comes off of the trigger and goes alongside that frame. So where do we put our finger on the trigger? How much do we put? Some folks make the mistake of putting too much of their finger inside that trigger guard and now we don't have as much fine motor skills. Instead, what I'd like to see is the end of your finger is your fingertip. You've got this first joint. I want to see it about midway between those, where it lies on your trigger. So if we're looking at that, we're only going to have a small portion of that trigger finger on that trigger, but it's going to give us the fine dexterity that we need to slowly and deliberately bring that trigger back until it goes boom. Okay, let's talk a bit about the proper stance when we're shooting. It's one thing if we're on the shooting range and target shooting. We want to achieve as best stance, as stable as a stance as we can. So in doing that, we're going to have our feet shoulder width apart. We're going to have our knees slightly bent, a good solid platform, sort of like a boxer stance, squaring up to your target. We're going to rock our hips forward and push our butt back and then round our shoulders in and toward the target. That's called, called an isosceles stance because when we're fully extended in that position, it's creating this isosceles triangle. And what's nice about that is, is that the energy and the recoil from the gun when it goes off will go straight up and into your larger muscle group, your shoulders. If you have an improper grip that's compromised, you could get a lot of recoil where it's snapping in your, uh, into your hands and in your fingers, wrists, where it's smaller bones and not much that can absorb that energy. So looking at the proper stance, we've got our grip, we've got our feet shoulder width apart, and we're going to punch out and come back, okay? Now, if we're in a critical incident, we can't control necessarily our stance. We may be 
on our back. We may be from behind cover, kneeling on our belly, who knows? But the important thing is, is when we're shooting that we have a stable uh, position to, from which to shoot, okay? So we've got our stance, we've got our grip, we've got our sight alignment, sight picture, and importantly, our trigger press. So we just need to relax our breathing, control our breathing, and go through that. And ultimately, you'll find that you'll be successful. Let's spend a few minutes talking about home security. We are at home more often now than ever before due to the current pandemic. And we need to understand that according to FBI statistics, bad guys and bad gals that want to breach your perimeter they are entering the majority of the time your home the same way you are right through the front door gone are the days that we can leave our doors unlocked and our windows open those obviously need to be locked and secured but don't think it stops there with regard to our doors, any of our doors that are outside doors, we need to take an extra hard look at. Most bad guys and gals will enter your doors and give them a couple of swift kicks and regardless of the level of locks that you've got in place, whether it be standard locks, deadbolt locks, whatever the case, it's not the locks that are typically the problem, but instead, it's the weakness of the strike plate on the, on the side of your door. The strike plates are typically held in by two micro screws like this. That is what's separating you from the bad guy in your castle or your home. What I'd like for you to do is run to the hardware store and spend a few bucks on three inch, three and a half inch screws. Pop out those small screws and replace them with these. Just by doing that, you've reinforced your door and that entry point by more than 10 times for literally pennies on the dollar. So what used to take two kicks is going to take upwards of 13 kicks to breach your perimeter. Listen, criminals are lazy. After the third kick, they're gonna go to your neighbor or someone else where they can gain entry much faster and without creating a lot of ruckus and chaos that could then draw witnesses or barking dogs or what have you. So make sure you get that done. The second most common point of entry for burglars into your home is through your first floor windows. Now, generally, they're going to come with a crowbar, but don't think that they're going to whack that glass because what's happening there again is it's creating noise that then could attract witnesses. So they're not going to break that glass. And by the way, those criminals are cowards. If they broke that glass, gaining entry to your home, they might get scratched, cut, or get a boo-boo. And see, they're not interested in that. So instead, they're going to take that crowbar and they're going to pop open those windows and gain access to your home. Go to the hardware store. This is a one by two. They come in eight foot lengths. And what you can do is whether you have sliding style windows, such as a sliding door, or you have the more uh, common windows that are double hung windows. So they're the types that you open and close. You measure those openings and cut your one by twos to fit and then stick those in your windows if they're the double hung or measure and cut to stick in your sliding windows or sliding doors. That's going to add further reinforcement. Bad guy's not going to be able to get in those unless he does break that glass, which again is not his favorite option. No matter what, you must have a home safety plan and it must be communicated with all of the people in your home whether they're on the upside the elderly maybe you live with elderly family members perhaps those family members also have special needs so these are things that you need to consider and incorporate into your home safety plan
Likewise, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you may have children, babies. Um, you need to consider their special needs in, in the event of an emergency. No matter where they are on that spectrum, everyone must know how to dial 911. And in addition to knowing how to dial 911, remember, most of us are making that call from a cell phone. The dispatchers at 911 cannot identify your location based on you calling from that cell phone. So, likewise, when we had landlines, that information was immediately available to the dispatchers. So please make sure that your children and all of the folks in your home know your address in which to respond to. Finally, designate a safe room. Don't think that just because you're armed or you're bigger that you should go on a seek and find mission throughout your home for bad guy or bad gals. Instead, retreat to that safe room with your loved ones and keep yourself safe. Barricade yourselves into that room, lock those doors, push anything you can in front of that, and then get off at a 90 degree angle from the direct entry of that door in case that perimeter is breached. Have access to a telephone, someone make that call to 911. Get law enforcement en route. Use your vocal commands. Call out to whomever's in your home and warn them, do not come in here. We are armed. Law enforcement is on the way. And if that perimeter is breached, then you need to take the action necessary to protect you and your family members. I hope you enjoyed your time with me today, and I very much appreciate the invitation to join you, Team Rocky, in your annual Health, Wellness, and Safety Seminar. If you have any questions or there's anything I can do for you, please reach out to me at OnGuardDefense.com. Thank you and be safe out there.